What's up guys, welcome back. We got another classic on the menu today. I'll be showing you how to make chicken tenders, not one, but two different ways, plus a couple sauces. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, people, it's brine time, and that means we need some buttermilk. We're going in with one quarter buttermilk into a large mixing bowl. To that buttermilk, we are gonna add two tablespoons of pickle juice along with some cayenne pepper just to spice things up a bit. And for a little extra flavor, we're going in with some Old Bay hot sauce. If you can't find Old Bay hot sauce, you can use whatever hot sauce you have in the pantry, whatever is your favorite will work just fine for this. And then we're going in with some AP season and that's my all purpose season. And it's a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Break out the whisk and mix to combine all those ingredients into this delicious brine. The pickle juice and the buttermilk both have a little acidity, which are going to help break down those muscle fibers in the chicken, make them nice and tender. Speaking of the chicken, we have two pounds of chicken tenderloins that we're going to season up beautifully with this all-purpose seasoning. If you haven't tried my AP seasoning yet, guys, I do have a link for you in the description box. Also has a discount code available for you as well. We're going to season that generously. If you don't have the AP seasoning, just use whatever seasoning you like on poultry. Again, this is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. A Cajun seasoning will work here as well. Next, you want to add that chicken to that buttermilk. Get in there with your hands. Make sure the chicken is completely submerged. You want to brine this chicken, basically marinate it for about an hour or so. You can do this up to 24 hours. I wouldn't do it much longer than that because it starts to get too soft after it marinates for too long. While that's in the fridge, we're gonna get our flour ready. We're going into another large mixing bowl with two cups of all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of cornstarch. The cornstarch is gonna help this chicken be as crispy as my beard is after a haircut. To that, we're gonna add a little cayenne pepper, one packet of sazon. You can use whatever seasoning you like for your fried chicken, guys. This is one of the blends that I like to use. Then we're going in with the AP seasoning. Again, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder for those of you that don't have that. Nice generous dose of that because it is low sodium. So if you're using an AP season and that's not low sodium, you might want to add a little bit less. Break out the whisk and mix to combine. I like to taste my flour to ensure that it's seasoned adequately. If you're not tasting it, you're just guessing. And if I learned anything during my two months in college, if you're guessing, you're usually wrong. So make sure that flour is seasoned adequately. Set that aside and we'll get started on our first sauce, which is a homemade honey mustard. And for that, you're gonna need one fourth cup of mayonnaise, use whatever mayo you like, one third cup of honey, one third cup of Dijon mustard. We're also gonna go in with one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Gonna hit it with a little all purpose seasoning as well. Break out your smaller whisk and mix to combine all those ingredients. You can adjust the ratio as needed. We went in with one tablespoon of lemon juice as well. You can make it a little bit sweeter by adding more honey. You can make it a little spicier by adding more Dijon mustard. Moving on to the spicy garlic aioli, we're going in with one half cup of mayonnaise, one fourth cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of sriracha, depending on how spicy you want it to be, one tablespoon of garlic paste, a few dashes of worst word in the world sauce, a little smoked paprika, and some Tony's Creole seasoning. All the good stuff. Little pinch of sugar just to balance things out. Give that a nice whisk. Again, taste as you go, adjust the flavor to your preference. You can add whatever seasonings you want to this. Nice little dipping sauce though. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and fry some chicken. We're going from the buttermilk directly into that seasoned flour. Get in there with your hands. Make sure the chicken is breaded beautifully and evenly. We don't want any bald spots on the chicken. So just get in there, be intentional about it. Press the seasoned flour into the chicken, shake off any excess flour and then place that on aluminum foil lined baking sheet. We want our chicken to sit out for about 10 to 15 minutes. That way the flour has time to really adhere to the chicken. Meanwhile, we're gonna get our oil up to temperature. So go ahead and fill your fryer up with about a half gallon or so of peanut oil or vegetable oil. We want that to be about 350 degrees. We know that because we use the digital food thermometer to be sure. You can grab that via the link in my description as well. So once the oil hits 350, drop your chicken tenders. Don't overcrowd your fryer because that's gonna drastically reduce the temperature of the oil and that's not what we want. And we're looking for beautifully golden brown and crispy chicken tenders. 
Chicken tenders are done once they hit 165 degrees internal temperature. Say it with me guys, looking good. Go ahead and remove those. We're gonna place them on a wire rack to drain. I prefer using a wire rack rather than paper towels because paper towels get soggy and they end up making your chicken soggy. Now it's time to make our garlic parm sauce. So we're going in with some melted butter, some grated garlic. Hit that with a little all purpose seasoning as well. Break out the whisk to mix to combine. Adding a little olive oil to the party. As always guys, specific measurements and ingredients are included for you in the description box. Now it's time to rain down a little Parmesan cheese. Make sure you use the grated kind and not the stuff that comes in that green bottle. Get the good stuff from the specialty cheese section at the grocery store. And just slowly whisk in that grated Parmesan. You can have a fantastic homemade garlic parm sauce. You can use that on chicken wings, chicken tenders, whatever you want. Really good on pasta also. Add a few chicken tenders, toss them in the sauce, hit it with a little extra grated Parmesan because why the hell not? Give it a spin for the cinematic effect. And then we're gonna plate this up. Get us a money shot, brace yourself people. Let me know what appetizer you wanna see next in the comments. And your boy is ready for a taste test. Let's dig in. As you can see, the meat is super juicy still. Piping hot, so I'm probably gonna burn my tongue, but what the hell? Oh man, that's a good tender, guys. Serve this up at your next party. Both sauces are fantastic. My favorite probably is the honey mustard, though. Can't beat a good homemade honey mustard. Now we gotta go in for the garlic parm. Let's get a taste test. Chicken's nice and tender. Still way too hot to be eating, but these are the things that I go through for you guys. Let me know which one's your favorite. Let me know if you plan to make this in the comments. If you like the recipe, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.